God has brought me laughter. Third, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Look at verses 8 through 11. On that day that Isaac was weaned, Abram held a great feast. All of Abram's friends and townspeople were invited, and Sarah prepared enough mouth-watering dishes for everyone at the feast. Maybe homemade uh, lasagna, <laughs> Korean barbecue, <laughs> and fresh-baked pumpkin pie for dessert. <laughs> the feast held in honor of little Isaac was such an important and joyous event that everyone rejoiced together with Isaac and his family. But there was one person who wasn't so happy. It was Ishmael, Isaac's uh, older half-brother. Thus far, Ishmael was the only son in this family. So he was the only heir to inherit everything of, uh, everything of Abraham and Sarah. But when Isaac was born, suddenly he became an a legitimate child, a, a son of the son of a slave woman. Literally, he lost everything. By this time, Ishmael was 17 years old. He knew what was going on. He was jealous of Isaac. So even at such an early age, he began harassing Isaac. Sarah saw this, and she was really angry. She said to Abram, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. Her reason was totally personal. She really disliked the idea that the, that, woman's, that slave woman's son would share the inheritance with Isaac. She would never let it happen. So she asked Abram to kick them out. At this, Abram was greatly distressed. To Sarah, Ishmael was that slave woman's son. But to Abram, Ishmael was his firstborn son whom he had loved so much. Once he uh, uh, thought that his life was the, uh, meaningful enough. Well, it was worthwhile to live for even his son Ishmael. That much he loved Ishmael. But now he was asked to kick him out of his house. Abram was greatly dis uh, dis uh, distressed. Look at verse 12. Let's read this verse together. Uh, verse 12. Let's go. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your maidservant. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham wanted his two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, to live together in his home happily ever after. How beautiful it would be if the uh, beautiful would be if all his family members Sarah, Hagar, Isaac, and Ishmael lived together in peace and unity. He was rich, and there were many rooms in his house. But Sarah did not think that way. Ishmael should not stay with Isaac. And amazingly. God saw, saw it in the same way. Even in God's eyes, Ishmael should be sent off from Abram's home. 
God's reason was because it is through Isaac that your offspring would be or will be reckoned. It meant that even though Ishmael was Abraham's biological offspring, God would not consider him as Abraham's offspring because Ishmael was not from God but from human thinking, unbelief, and compromise. Thereby, in the family of God's covenant, in God's eyes, there was no room for Ishmael to stay. Eventually, Ishmael should be sent off. Abraham's desire was to take care of both of them very well. But God's will was that Abraham would only take care of Isaac well, whom God sent. Then, send off Ishmael, entrusting in God's, him in God's hands. When you have both Isaac and Ishmael, we want to keep both of them because both of them are precious and we love both of them. But God wants us to take care of only Isaac who is from God. And God wants us to send off Ishmael. Once we do so, God promises that he will take care of our Ishmael. As we serve God's purpose, God sends many sheep to us. They are from God. And God's will is that we should take care of them because they will be reckoned as our offspring, as our sons and daughters and brothers and sisters. They will be our real fruit according to God's will and plan. They will be our real family members. God asks us to send off Ishmael by faith in him so that we can focus on Isaac, whom God sends to us. Through Isaac, your offspring will be reckoned. By the way, some people say, I don't have Ishmael. Ishmael, maybe 3,000 years ago there was Ishmael. I don't have Ishmael. <laughs> Who? Well, what is our Ishmael? Maybe our human dream for success in the world. So we want to live for God, and at the same time, we want to hold on to that desire also. They cannot go together in our life of faith. Eventually, we have to let it go. Or our remaining some compromise in our life of faith. Some element of compromise is there. And eventually, we have to remove that. Or our love for the world. Our, our Ishmael can also be any human relationship such as girlfriend or boyfriend that conflicts with our new life in God. To Abraham, it was his own firstborn son. His firstborn son. Even Abraham circumcised him. So, when you think about that, we can see that Ishmael can be even our biological father or mother or brother or sister. One person studied the Bible, then when after studying Genesis chapter 14, Abraham gave one tenth of everything to the uh, Melchizedek. He was very touched. Wow, one tenth offering was there even. So he decided to bring one-tenth offering. Then his girlfriend, he shared with her about some, that great thing he had learned. And her girlfriend you know, challenged him and then stopped him, and he was troubled, and uh, he just compromised. Then later, uh, less than a year later, he fell away, 
uh, because he wanted to keep that relationship. Then about less than a year, his girlfriend found another man and he was left out. That, that may be Ishmael, he had to really send off, really. Another person where I know, uh, Dr. John John, uh, he uh, uh, grew up uh, uh, under the care of a widowed mother. He saw how much uh, she suffered to uh, support him. Then when he became a medical doctor, no, when he became a medical student, his dream was to be a doctor and make a lot of money and take care of her. But during his college period, he studied the Bible and met God. Then, after praying about God's will upon his life, he gave up his license so that he would serve God. Then God accepted his decision and established him as a great man of God under his care Korea UBF sent out about 1,700 missionaries to the, uh, uh, to the entire world. God blessed him greatly. There are many practical Ishmael's people may have. Maybe they want to hold on to them as long as possible, but eventually God wants them to send, uh, uh, send them off so that they can be really dedicated to God and pursue God's purpose. People want intimate fellowship with God, talking to God and hearing from Him directly. They want to do mighty works of God for God's glory, even performing great miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. But to many of them, it is nothing but a wishful thinking. Because they do not send off their Ishmael. With the elements of compromise in their lives and hearts, their spiritual growth has limit. God's direction for us, as it was for Abraham, is to send off Ishmael. So that we can really focus on Isaac, whom God sends. And under our care, Isaac can grow very well. And then, become great people of God. And he promises that if we send Ishmael off, he will take care of you know, he will take care of him very well because he knows our concern for our Ishmael. Upon being given such a harsh command, what did Abraham do? Look at verse 14. Let's read this verse together. Let's go. Early the next morning, Abram took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with a boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. Abram didn't... Uh, question or plead with God concerning this matter. Instead, early the next morning, he gave Hagar and Ishmael one gallon of water and a, a, a sack of lunch and sent them off into the desert as God had told him. His firstborn son, he just threw the lunch sack and then the gallon of water he sent him into the desert. How, how, what would happen to him? In the eyes of people, how did he look? He looked really cruel. Uh, uh, during Bible study on this passage, one of my students screamed, Oh my goodness, Abraham was cold-hearted. No, he was not cold-hearted. He was such a great man, tender-hearted as we learned in the previous passage. In order to obey God's word, Abraham denied his feelings and emotions. Abraham was fighting a fierce battle. How did Ishmael feel when his father 
Now, his own father was kicking him out only because he had a new son. Oh, my goodness. Ishmael was really hurt. He was confused. He felt betrayed. Maybe he was angry at Abraham. Maybe he did not want to see his father's face at all. Maybe he, he hung his head low. Or he was staring at his father with angry, uh, the, uh, with his eyes glowing with anger. Maybe he screamed at his father, I hate you. I will never see you again. When Abraham saw his firstborn son suffering so terribly this way, his heart was broken. But he did not live by his feelings and emotions. He did not live by his human nature either. Instead, he lived by God's word, denying himself and doing what God wanted him to do. While seeing his son suffering so much, he pushed him out of his house. And then while he was crying so much, he just shut the door. Wow. That much Abraham fought. Even at such great pain, he did not back out. Instead, he continued his obedience to God's direction and sent them off into the desert, swallowing all related misunderstanding, sorrows, and pains by himself. Abram was not an ordinary man. He was not a silly, emotional, or humanistic man at all. Instead, in God's eyes, Abram was a warrior who went his way despite all challenges. We are reminded of how Jesus, despite all difficulties and pains, proceeded his way and obeyed God's command. Jesus was a mighty warrior. God says in the Bible, My righteous will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. If God's people shrink back because of some difficulties, or pains, or sorrows, God will not be pleased with them. At this, Hebrews chapter 10 conclusively says, But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Amen. Amen. By the way, what Abraham was asked to do was indeed more than anyone could bear. How could he do? Could he, Abraham do this? How could he send off his firstborn teenage son, Ishmael, into the desert with just a lunch sack and a gallon of water? He could do so because of two reasons. One reason was because God had promised him that when he sent him off, God would take care of him and bless him. Abraham believed in God's uh, protection and care for Ishmael. So he did not need uh, to give uh, Ishmael a lot of food or many uh, uh, camels, just lunch sack and a gallon of water. God would take care of him. That was the ground he was relying on. The other reason was because of God's blessing on Isaac. God promised him that God's covenant blessing would be given to Isaac and God's covenant people would be reckoned through Isaac. In order to secure this blessing of God's covenant on Isaac, Abraham was willing to send off his firstborn son Ishmael into the desert. This much Abraham pursued God's covenant blessing on Isaac. The most important 
and valuable thing in his eyes. That's God's covenant blessing on Isaac. Here we see the importance and value of God's covenant blessing. What is the most important thing in your life? Maybe you would say, my firstborn son. Maybe you would say, my firstborn daughter. But now we see Abraham's value system. The most important and valuable thing in life was God's covenant blessing. This is what we must pursue and secure. You know, to secure, secure this blessing for us, we are willing to send off anything or anyone that is in the way. We are like farmers. We are like a farmer who found a treasure chest buried in his rented field. While he was working in his rented field, he found a treasure chest buried in that. So what does he do once he finds the treasure chest in his rented field? He goes home, sells everything he has, and purchases that field. While he is selling everything he has, people call him crazy. But he knows what he is doing and what he is going to get. So he has no problem. Also, we are like a merchant who found a pearl of the greatest value. It was for sale. And it seemed, it seemed that no one really recognized its real value. So what does that merchant do? He goes home, sells everything he has, and purchases the pearl. God's covenant blessing is like that. The most valuable thing in this life we can have. The most precious thing. God's covenant is, is a token that brings us into real intimate fellowship with God. A token that will bring us into true friendship with God. It is a token that will bring to us great inheritance in the kingdom of God. We value this blessing above all other things. So we pursue this with all our heart and strength. At any cost, we secure it. Then people say, you are crazy. We don't care. Why? The most precious thing we are securing who cares, really? This most precious thing we are securing. This is what Christian life is really about. God calls you to his covenant. Do this, and I will do that for you. That's contract. We accept it, and we pursue it. That's what Christian life is really about. And this covenant, contract with God, is the most glorious and important and valuable thing. We must take care of Isaac, whom God sends, because through him, our offspring will be reckoned. Abraham sent off Ishmael into the desert. That was a turning point for Abraham. That as he did so, he got rid of all compromising elements from his life of faith. You know, to live for God and pursue God's covenant blessing, he sent off his firstborn son into the desert. This shows his, heart, uh, his heart's complete decision that he would seek God's will, God's covenant alone with all his heart and strength. Nothing else, even his own firstborn son, he gave up. That much he was determined to seek God's covenant purpose. 
Abraham fought a fierce battle, spiritual battle, and he won the victory. In verses 15 through 21, we see how God took care of Ishmael. By the way, what happened to the Ishmael and Hagar? They suffered so much in the desert. Maybe in, uh, in, the, uh, in less than a day, they used up all lunch sack and a uh, gallon of water, and they wandered in the desert uh, all the way, maybe two more days and three more days. And then what happened to them? They collapsed, and they were crying. And Hagar could not watch uh, her son uh, dying that way, so she uh, uh, came up uh, about a about, uh, bow shot away from uh, Ishmael, and there she was going to die separately. That much. <laughs> Meanwhile, what did God do? God just watched. And right before they died, God intervened and rescued them. So we wonder, how come God did not help them right away? He promised. But uh, did he really uh, 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 violate his, uh, uh, his promise? Didn't he, didn't he uh, uh, keep uh, his promise uh, for Ishmael and uh, uh, Hagar? Yes, he, he kept his promise, but he waited until they reached their limit and collapsed. So we wonder, why did God do so? What is your idea? How come God did not help them quickly while they have still uh, the uh, half of the water left and then they had uh, lunch sack still uh, they have it? God could have helped them that, at that time. But how come he did not help them right away? Instead, he watched them all the way until they reached the limit. While they were about to die, he helped them. Why did he do so? What is your understanding? Maybe uh, if you ask me, I can tell. Why did God do so? Because that is his style. <laughs> That's what he does all the time. He always does. does so. At the last moment, he comes and helps us. Why? I don't know, but based on experience, when he did that, I was so happy and thankful. If he did so, uh, if he helped me, when, when I said, please help me, give me a job, and then he gives me a job, then I would say, oh, thank you. Then I would forget about it. I would take it for granted. But when I reached my limit, about to die, and he helped me, I was super thankful. I would never forget that experience. What if God helped uh, Ishmael right away? So he was still angry and then bitter and then, and then God gave him a, 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 a food and then God gave him a job and he survived and he was successful. Then what? He would still be angry at his father. How could you do that? How could you do that to me? Then he would even angry at God saying, because of you, my father was like that. Because of you, everything would be so totally terrible. But because God waited all the way when Ishmael experienced God's help and became, he, was, he survived by God's help. He was very thankful and happy. He would never forget what God did for him. And that way, his relationship with God became good also. Indeed, God took care of Ishmael very well that he became the, uh, the father of 12 rulers. Many great nations were established through Ishmael's descendants. 